What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. It's Joe from Petty Fixes. So today I got a pretty good one for y'all. Um, I've been looking at this case for quite some time since CES 2020. It's the Thermaltake View 51. It's considered the little brother to the View 71 from Thermaltake. But as you'll see when we get into building in this case and this review today, that there's nothing little about this case. It's my favorite style of case, which is a cube style chassis. And if you know this channel very well, if you just know me in general, you know that I love building in cube style chassis. So with that said guys, let's go ahead and jump into this review of the Thermaltake View 51 Snow Edition. Though it's considered the little brother, there's nothing little about this case. This case is huge. So going over the exterior of the case, this case is classified as a cube style chassis. It's very spacious and its main side is where you're going to find all your components. And the back side is where you're going to find things like the power supply, cable management, things like that. But more on that in a minute. Looking at the front, it's dominated by two 200mm RGB fans sitting behind a 4mm thick tempered glass window. This panel is also removable. The I.O. consists of a USB-C port, two USB 3.0, two USB 2.0, a headphone jack and a mic jack, and a reset button, which is where you actually control the RGB functionality on the included fans. Moving to the main side of the case is dominated by another 4mm thick tempered glass window. This window can be opened by twisting the black knob that keeps the window closed and secured. By the way, this window is not tenant. Actually, none of the windows are tenant, so keep that in mind when buying this case. Opening up the window shows off the cavernous interior. This window is actually removable as well. Here we can see all the options that this case has to offer, which is a lot. It comes with three included fans, a 120mm fan in the rear for exhaust, and two 200mm in the front. This case comes included with a vertical GPU mount also, but doesn't include a riser cable, so you have to purchase that separately from Thermaltake. Along the bottom of the case, there's two SSD mounts and a mount to place a pump rest combo. This particular mount right here is adjustable so you can maneuver it in a couple different spots around the case on the bottom. All these are removable via a thumb screw. After removing these mounts, you open up room for 320mm fans. Also, you can fit up to a 360mm radiator down here as well, but there is a caveat. If you want to use a radiator, it has to be a slim one. Using a standard thickness radiator, the fans will hit the vertical GPU bracket, so you have to use a slim one in order to use fans as well with the vertical GPU bracket attached. Using a standard thickness radiator, the fans actually hit the bottom of the GPU bracket. Once removed, it supports as thick as a radiator as you like. Underneath the case, on the bottom, there's a slide out dust filter accessible from the back of the case. There's also room for sound mounted case fans, up to three 120mm fans. That side mounted area also supports up to a 360mm radiator. So moving to the front, there's support for three 120mm, three 140mm, or two 200mm fans. It can also take up to a 360mm radiator. This all sits on a bracket which can be removed to make installation easier. At the top of the case, it has the same support of three 120mm, three 140mm, or two 200mm fans as well as the same support for up to a 360mm radiator. It all sits under a tempered glass panel that's removable. They screw into a removable bracket as well. One thing to note, while you can fit a radiator up top, it cannot fit under the glass with fans on top of it. The radiator has to be mounted below the fan bracket while the fans are mounted above the bracket right below the glass. This also supports push-pull configs as well. Moving to the back side of the case, we see space for the 120mm exhaust fan, the motherboard I.O. shield space, a place for hard drives, eight PCIe slots, and a place for the power supply. Talking about the PCIe slots for a bit, they can actually be turned sideways by unscrewing a few screws and remounted. Going around to the back of the case, the back panel is held in by two screws that are easily removed. There's two spaces for dust filters as well. Here you can see space for all the hard drives, power supply, and all of the requisite cables required for your system. Around here as well is the fan hub for three included fans. It's a pretty cool addition, but I do wish that they would have let us use the fans included with their own hubs that you can buy with their fans. This hub can be connected to the motherboard as well through a three pin ARGB header. So now that we got the case disassembled completely, let's go ahead and build in it.
So as you see, we've completed the build in the View 51. I really like the case. Um, this case is pretty much everything I could possibly ask for. Um, there's tons of room for expanding as far as like water cooling and radiator support and fan support. Um, hard drive support is kind of limited. So there's really only like four spaces for hard drive support. So you got those two SSD brackets and then you got those two 3.5 inch brackets in the back. But you know, it's kind of limited. I wish it could hold more for such a massive case. But um, I do have plans for this case in the near future. Um, so please stay tuned. This is gonna be something, it's probably my best build ever. Um, you guys should definitely like it. If you like my Leon Lee PCO 11 build and everything that I did with it, this one's gonna completely outclass that one, man. So if you guys like this video, please drop me a like on this video. It'll really help out the channel and help this video get noticed a lot more. Also, if you're new to the channel, go ahead, do me a favor and subscribe to the channel because it also helps me out. I'm on the road to a thousand. I'm almost there, guys. So once I get to a thousand, the content should really pick up. That's it, guys. It's Joe from Petty Fixes. I'll see y'all in the next one.